Welcome to another bonus episode of Character Creation Cast, everyone. Just me again for this episode. But that's okay, because we'll have a normal series starting up again next week, Monday. For today, I am joined by Aviv Orr and Iran Aviram to talk about Crystal Hearts. But before we get to that, a few announcements. If you want a front row seat to my game development process for Chimera, or just want to talk to us about character creation, or anything about life, head on over to our Discord at discord.charactercreationcast.com. And speaking of Chimera, I still have seats available for my two playtests at the Midwinter Gaming Convention in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, on January 12th, 2019. I'd love to see some of you there and play a game with you. So head on over to the show notes to find the links to the con and to my two events. Finally, we'd love to have some more reviews to read on the air. So head on over to Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or Facebook to leave us one if you haven't already. It really makes us feel amazing reading them. So please help us feel amazing. Well, that's it for now. So let's get to the show and learn about Crystal Hearts. Enjoy. Welcome to a special bonus episode of Character Creation Spotlight, everyone. In this bonus segment, we'll be shining a light on some current and -and up-and-coming games to keep an eye out for. I'm your host, Ryan, and today we are welcoming Aviv and Eran to talk about Crystal Hearts, a Savage Worlds RPG setting. Welcome to Character Creation Spotlight, both of you. It's really great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Very happy to be here. All right, Aviv, could you go and start off and tell us a little bit about yourself and any of the projects that you are currently involved in? Uh, So I'm an illustrator working mainly in the tabletop uh, games, board games, role-playing games industry. Um, Two of the main projects I've worked on recently are Thornwatch from Penny Arcade and Lone Shark Games. And the Good Society RPG by Story Brewers, uh, which Ooh. is a game based on Jane Austen novels, which is amazing. But yeah. the main project that I've been uh, involved with in the past years and then the past few months more intensely is the Crystal Heart um, webcomic, up to four players webcomic, and of course, the starter set and the oncoming Kickstarter. Wonderful. Sounds great. Thank you so much. And Eran, how about yourself? Hi, I'm Iran, and you've been saying this name very well, just oh, wonderful. so you know. <laughs> uh, and my accent is a bit harsher than Aviv's, and I've been working in the industry, the RPG industry, ever since about 2001, mostly okay. as a translator for things into Hebrew from English. Uh, then an editor, I used to own a gaming shop, I used to work in helping people learn social skills using role-playing games, uh, etc., etc. And currently, I am working as an editor and a writer in role-playing games. And I have a podcast as well about role-playing games, which I... Which, Apparently, I like to speak. I like to speak about them in my spare time as well. So, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like you both live and breathe role playing games, and that's fantastic because that's what we're all about here. All right. Uh, so normally, Amelia would be here to help out, but life is quite busy for the both of us at different times lately. So that means we'll just have me here today with our guests. And since this is an abridged version of our normal format. We'll just be sticking to the highlights of the system with a special focus on character creation. So, without further ado, how about we find out what this game is all about? What's in a game? So, what is the setting of Crystal Hearts? So, in the world of Crystal Heart, um, everyone's heart is literally made of stone. um, And 
There is an organization called SYN, which has developed a device called the Harness that is implanted in your chest, removing your actual heart. And in that harness, you can uh, socket crystals, which are artifacts from a bygone age, which give you um, amazing superpowers, wow. but also change your personality in all kinds of quirky, quirky to, um, to uh, quite serious ways. Right. Um, and that organization sends its agents, well, you are its agents, the player characters, obviously, sends its agents into the five lands, into the world to um, find and retrieve more of those crystals um, because they're just hiding everywhere in caves and ruins and under the sea and sometimes just in villages, just in the middle. Um <laughs> So yeah, that's that's the that's the basis of the setting. Oh, that's really cool. That sounds uh, really unique. Kind of a uh, an Iron Man uh, sort of thing, only for everybody. Yep. I love it. Awesome. So, what sort of things do we need to play this game then? You need Savage Worlds. Uh, specifically, you'll need the new edition, the Adventure Edition of Savage Worlds, okay. which just finished a Kickstarter when we're recording this episode. So no <laughs> one, no one yet has it, but you will need it to play our game. <laughs> you also need some dice. You'll need some cards. That's the basic things for Savage Worlds, and I think a few friends and a GM <laughs> and a spirit of adventure. Excellent. That's that's what we all need in our lives. <laughs> okay, so what do characters do in this game then? We are playing agents of Sin. Um, you will mostly be sent on adventures by Sin to recover the crystals. And when crystals are in the wild, they are what we call feral. They have feral manifestations. So okay. if, for example, you have a crystal that has powers that give you mind control, you can receive thoughts... That same crystal, if you'll find it in the wild, might um, send out disruptive thoughts into the world around it, making people insane or maybe driving them crazy or making them do all sorts of strange things. You'll need to fight this behavior in some way, maybe be able to overcome it yourself or maybe mm -hmm. have to overcome people that are going crazy and attack you or something like that and then find the crystal and claim it take it that's oh, the very, very cool. basic concept of the very basic type of adventure you will probably have a lot of in crystal heart very cool uh, and do the different crystals uh do they do different things or Oh, very much so, yes. Uh, every crystal is defined by a theme, what the crystal is about. Okay. And some powers that are based on the theme. So, for example, you might have a theme that's all about protection. Or you can have a theme that's about death. Or okay. a theme that's about... Creating the... tiny pink bubbles in your hand. There's actually <laughs> one like that as well, yeah. Yeah, there's a theme that's all about bubbles. So you awesome. can create a pink bubble. You can envelop yourself in a bubble. Stuff like that. Oh, very cool. All right. Uh, well, it sounds like there's some unique things going on in this game. So what would you say is one of the most unique things uh, about this setting? First of all, obviously the crystals, uh, but the interchangeability of them is probably the, the important part. Because mm -hmm. when you replace them, not only do you replace your role in the party in a way, you can be the healer with a healing crystal, but then you socket the fireball crystal and now you shoot fireballs. You also change your personality. Not, oh. not necessarily in a drastic way, but because each crystal carries with it a hindrance in Savage World terms, Ooh. something that will affect the way you think, it will also affect, hopefully, the way that you roleplay in, some, <laughs> that, that, in a way that you'll find interesting or fun. So we, yeah. hope, we hope that will work. Uh, beyond that, the setting itself has only humans. We don't have other races. Um, we don't have any spells or any kind of powers except for crystals. Everything comes back to crystals. And we try to remain consistent with these concepts and see where, the, where, where they take us. Well, that's very cool. Yeah, one of, one of the things that I loved about covering uh, Savage Worlds when we did our Deadlands Reloaded was picking the hindrances. So to find out that they actually come along with some of the crystals, that's really wild. I like that. What are the types of characters people can make in this game then? So since everyone is human, um, 
I guess the main thing that differentiates different people in this world is where they come from. So we mentioned there are five lands in this world, and uh, the people from the five lands, they're all human, but they do differ um, both in how they look and how they view life, because the lands themselves are different, not just in geography and climate, they're different in the personality of the land, in a mm -hmm. way. Uh, um, we, we have actually a theme for each land. The type of stories that happen there, the type of people that will come from there, mm -hmm. um, the cultural and ethnicities, uh, uniqueness of each land. Uh, and mechanically, each one gets a bump in one uh, attribute. <laughs> so that, yeah. that as well. Oh, very cool. But you can't play something that's not an agent of sin. You will play an agent of sin. It's a, it's a, it's a major <laughs> point of the setting. And as different as you'll be from each other, you all have to answer to sin. Okay. Uh, and that's probably the one thing that is not really interchangeable in any way. That makes sense. Very cool. Um, and then what are the steps that one has to do for character creation? I, I know we, we went over this in detail in our Deadlands Reloaded for our standard Savage Worlds character. Um, but is there anything uh, in addition to that that you have to do or anything that uh, kind of slips into the middle of the process? So um, to begin with, since everyone is playing a sin agent, the first thing you do um, when you create a character is think about why your character has joined sin. Um, because you don't just sign up and uh, join the force and then you can leave whenever you want. You actually give your heart away to this slightly mysterious, maybe suspicious organization um, and they do whatever they do with it <laughs> and you get all those amazing powers and also responsibilities. So you need to think really hard about why you want to join this organization and we have some ideas in, uh, in the setting book. Mm -hmm. Another important step is your relationship with your with the organization. Mm -hmm. Because we want the characters, as they begin the game, to already have, hopefully, they don't have to, but you can choose during character creation a mentor. Okay. Someone that will influence the way that you probably conceive the organization and will be a sort of a contact or maybe a rival in the organization going forward, providing okay. you with a reason to think about sin in a personal way. Oh, that's very cool. And another thing that's really important is the team, because you're not just a group of adventurers. You were trained as a sin team, and that must, that must mean something during character creation. Mm -hmm. But we don't want it to mean too much, because you've only just created the character, and you don't really know what your relationship is going to be, so we just give you a nudge. Oh, wonderful. We ask you to draw a card. It's very common in Savage Worlds. And according to the suit, some inspiration about what you think or have in common about some other person in the group. Oh, I like that. So it's effectively uh, creating a, a sort of relationship mechanic um, at character creation. So you at least have a little bit of a starting point of how to role play that. It's very Absolutely. much inspired from uh, many part by the Apocalypse games that also mm -hmm. have um, relationship. But they have something much more concrete than what we suggest. Yes. Uh, for some, uh, Among other reasons, because Savage Worlds doesn't have relationship mechanics in any mm -hmm. way. And we didn't want to add any. Mm -hmm. This is so just, just kind a... of planting the seeds uh, for, for players to do whatever they want with it, basically. Yeah. No, I like that a lot. I, I love it when games include that sort of forced relationship mechanic that gives you that extra little oomph of why you care about the team. Uh, to start the game with, which is really cool. Yes, absolutely. And the rest will be fleshed out once we play, but it's nice to start with something. Mm -hmm. And now, as far as I am aware, uh, Savage Worlds is, is generally, there's no concrete classes or archetypes or anything like that. But uh, the Deadlands uh, book had some, like, if you wanted to be this type of character, you know, this is who, how they kind of are. But it's still 100% up to you of what sort of uh, you know, benefits and what sort of hindrances your character has. Uh, do you have 
um, those sorts of like nudges towards character archetypes in this yes. as well. Yes, we have a list of of uh, archetypes according to lands. All of them assuming you you were some person who is very typical to the land in some way. Yeah. Uh, we give, I think, five for each land, something like that. But also we have a different class of archetypes that are all about your role in the party. Do you want to be the face? Do you want mm-hmm. to be the supporter? Do you want to be the, let's say, rogue? We'll call it specialist, mm-hmm. but, but, but it's a rogue. <laughs> and <laughs> if so, then this is probably this this role is way more important to you the player than what land you are from uh right. so so choose this archetype instead very cool i like that a lot and of course the the, the last thing you pick uh, or maybe the first thing you pick depending on on how you from where you come into the system is uh your beginning crystal the first mm. crystal that you have socketed once you go out there and start adventuring. Mm-hmm. And uh, that crystal can significantly affect the way you play your character or not, completely depending on the player and the crystal. Right. Um, but it gives you that set of powers that you have in addition to your more mundane um, skills and abilities. And it also gives you that um, personality quirk to to go along with your existing personality that you know the person <laughs> that you were before you joined sin mm-hmm. and uh it's it's very much up to the player to decide how much they want uh to let that crystal affect who they are at the moment because it right. can change at any moment yeah that's very cool and one question i thought of is um is it just the agents of sin that has these harnesses yes Oh. Uh, that doesn't mean that they are the only person, the only people that use crystals. Right. Uh, it means they are the only people that use them reliably and relatively safely. Ooh. Uh, there's also a thing called shard, which is basically what happens when a crystal shatters. Mm-hmm. And each of the shards has a single power stuck on maximum level <laughs> that <laughs> anyone can use. Anyone. You don't have to have a harness or um, experience or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the basis, a possible basis for many adventures where you face people with supernatural powers that are not seen agents. That's why yeah. we have it, actually. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, it sounds a little dangerous, too. Oh, yes. Especially, <laughs> by the hand, by the way, in, in the hands of a seen agent. Uh-huh. You, you, because you already have a crystal, holding a shard in your hand is really dangerous. There's Ooh. this resonance between them. And also, it helps us make sure that you can never become ov- overpowered because <laughs> you, can, you can never use a crystal and a shard as well at the same time. Oh, that's amazing. I, I love uh, adding that little bit of uh, scientific crystal resonance yes. into it. That's, that's really sweet. We use a lot of that as, uh, I don't say excuse, but as long as we use it consistently, I'm fine with it. Mm-hmm. We use it to explain why things happen in the world in specific ways that are very helpful for the ge- for the gaming effect that they have. Exactly, that's awesome. I I, I love this setting. I I love the concept, and I I really want to make characters for this, but uh, we don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, is there anything? Uh, like new to this setting specifically that we're going to be seeing in the Kickstarter? Any stretch goals that you wanted to point out at all? As far as stretch goals go, we, we're we following um, uh, pretty much the usual line of products that usually comes with Savage World products. So mm-hmm. um, we would like to have bennies, you know, crystal-themed bennies. We Ooh. would like to have... Uh, well, I would most like to have the action and adventure deck. So Savage Worlds relies on cards uh, quite heavily in the mechanics. When you uh, do combat, you draw cards for the initiative order and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So often, Savage World settings come with their own deck of cards that are themed around uh, the theme of the setting. We have some really cool ideas for that. And Ooh. also, the adventure deck is a brilliant idea, I think. Um it's a deck of 54 just ideas, twists, things that happen throughout the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and p- each player gets one or two of these at the beginning of the session. And they can just play them during the session. And it gives them a little control over the narrative and uh, lets them 
insert interesting surprises and twists into the game. And we are super excited about having a deck like this for Crystal Heart. So I really hope we get that stretch goal. That sounds really cool. Is, is there anything specific uh, in the Kickstarter that that's going to enhance uh, character creation at all by chance? Well, we're going to, if we manage to get to that stretch goal, um, probably double the amount of crystals we'll have in the book, Ooh. which means we'll have a ton more starter crystals yes. for you to choose from. And that's important because let's say you start, you create a character. Sure, fun. You choose from 20 crystals. Next time you create a character, well, you've already seen these 20 crystals, haven't you? And you've already mm -hmm. decided which one of them you want. So <laughs> uh, uh, no no surprises there. So uh, you would love to have a PDF with 20 more, I think. Oh, I, I, I know I definitely would. That sounds then, amazing. Then great. Uh, <laughs> Very cool. Um, anything else that you want to point out about the system before we go? Well, we should mention that uh, all of this is based on a webcomic that we run on up yeah. And uh, there's a funny thing that happens there related to character creation on the second page where we have one of the players explaining how they don't really know how the character looks like. Mm -hmm. We show the other the other two characters in world. We show them in the fantasy world. But the third character is just this blank. And the player says, well, I have this and this. I, I have the character sheet. I know how much dice he has in this and this. Uh, and the GM says, well, let's create the character then mm -hmm. using this. And throughout the, the last few panels, uh, they, he says, I have this amount of uh, agility. Okay, then mm -hmm. you're probably nimble. And mm -hmm. I have this amount of skills. Okay, so you probably have a, a big back on your back or something. I, mm -hmm. I, 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 it's funny that I don't remember my own character, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and that, that was a lot of fun. And uh, one of, uh, I really like creating characters. Mm -hmm. And we are probably going to have a one shot during the webcomic or something like that, just to have an opportunity to create more characters. Oh, very because, nice. Because we can, we, we've been using the same characters all over, obviously. They won't change them. They're mm -hmm. mid campaign. <laughs> I really love that there's a there's a webcomic attached to this system because it it gives a very good visual representation of what the world is like, what the people look like. Um and it it gives you a kind of a little bit of a head start if you are reading these these comics and uh wanting to dive into this system. Uh so that's that's very cool. You've got that synergy going on there. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think what's going on in the comic right now is a, a good example of how a Crystal Heart session would look, at least at the beginning of a Crystal Heart campaign, mm -hmm. where, where the agents are novice and eager to go out and find crystals and they don't quite know about the big picture quite yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, actually the, the system or well, the setting kind of came after the webcomic. Um, we started with well, it's kind of intertwined. It's but, complex. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we started with, we had a webcomic going uh, for over a year, and uh, we wanted to move away from doing just jokes about board games to doing an actual story about yeah. role-playing games. So then we needed to, to find a, a good setting and a good system to go with it, and that's kind of how it started. It is based on a game we played a long time ago, mm -hmm. uh, which is where the setting was born, I suppose. Um, but the web comics is where it it developed and actually came to life as a game. Oh, that's um, wonderful! It's also well, we've developed the art style, yeah. so the the setting book is going to benefit from having a very established art style already, and uh, hopefully, it will look awesome. <laughs> uh, thanks to that, and mm -hmm. it, it will know it will know what it wants to say. It has definitely helped with um, sort of garnering interest for the Kickstarter with yeah. uh, releasing the free starter set that we did about a, more than a month ago. Um, we already had art, we already had uh, a visual language, and that really helps capture people. Um, yeah, even w when the setting is amazing, but people have to read. 20 pages to get it it's a little bit harder to grab them than when you have a, a, a 
shiny, colorful illustration as a cover, and then they can start reading and, and understand why that setting is so cool. Yeah, definitely. That sounds awesome. So when does the Kickstarter end? So it goes up on the 20th and it ends on uh, 11th of December. Of 2018, for those in the future. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, that would be a really long Kickstarter. <laughs> it very well would be, yes. Wonderful. Well, thank you both so much for joining me to talk about Crystal Hearts. I really enjoyed this. Thank you so much for having us. It was great. Yeah. Aviv, could you remind everyone what sort of things you're working on and where they can find you online? Uh, so I do art in all kinds of ways. And uh, you can find me um, at avivo.com. That's my portfolio website. And you can also find me on Twitter at Avivo. Wonderful. Iran, how about yourself? Uh, I'm an editor and writer specializing in awesome, uh, I hope. <laughs> and you can find me at uh, eranaviram.me. Good luck with that. You can, <laughs> you can probably just search for Iran Aviram or N-N-E-S-K. That's where you'll find me on Twitter. Wonderful. And we'll put some links in the show notes to everything. So if people are having troubles they'll be able to click on them right there. Cool. Wonderful. Well, thank you both so much for joining me for this special bonus episode of Character Creation Spotlight. And thanks everyone that is listening for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Spotlight, like Character Creation Cast, is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even find some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast it originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can also be found in the show notes. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like Warda. Warda is an original fantasy actual play podcast created by Ali Grauer and Drew Marzieski. It's one part Game of Thrones, two parts Downton Abbey, served on the rocks with a twist of Agatha Christie. Discover magic, mystery, and more than a little sociopolitical commentary along the way. The city holds thousands of stories. What will yours be?